All right, folks, it's official. Skynet is taking over. AI is here to stay. Not that, look, if you were one of those people that thought AI would just kind of go away, well, you're probably wrong. Recently, ChatGPT 4.0 came out, and uh, I think it shocked a lot of people. People were surprised at what it all could do. AI, 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 AI. Now, it just so happened at the same exact time, yesterday I got invited to go to this one day intensive with this guy named Mike Koenigs over at the Genius Network, hosted by Joe Polish himself. And this was really interesting because this is this conference, if you will, this, this one day training was about how as entrepreneurs, we can leverage AI to do more. How can we make ourselves more efficient, more productive? And so I wanted to take a little bit of a moment today and kind of debrief what I learned over in the training. I had, I'm not gonna lie, a lot of oh shit moments, a lot of panic a little bit of, oh man, like what am I gonna do? But then it was followed by the realization that I think everything is gonna be a lot easier moving forward. And also before Skynet takes over, we could probably make some money along the way. So by no means am I an AI expert. I know very little about it. In fact, when it first came out, I won't lie to you, I was kind of late to the to the party, mainly because I would play around with it, have the wrong prompts. I didn't like the, the copy that I would do. I thought it was crappy, and so I kind of get rid of it. I stopped using it. But then yesterday I realized how I was using the tool of AI was completely wrong. Now I'm back at it. Now I'm interested again. And yeah, some of the results are pretty awesome. All right, before we get into the use cases, first let's talk about the kind of the release of ChatGPT 4.0 and some of the new things. Some of the things that came with the release was fast response times, all of that. But I think the most interesting thing was the fact that it can listen now and talk back to you, which again is borderline creepy, but also super interesting. The other thing that I used to really not like about ChatGPT 4 is that each individual chat wouldn't remember what you talked about, but now that I can, like watch this creepy stuff. Hey there, recently I've been uploading a bunch of content about me, Raylan Davis, and I wanna make sure you remembered everything. What do you know so far about me and uh, my brand? Of course, Raylan. Here's what I know about you and your brand so far. You are Raylan Davis, the founder of Elevated Coaches Academy. Your academy specializes in helping coaches and consultants streamline lead generation and client conversion through co-hosted web webinars. You're actively engaged in creating content, including a YouTube video about the new capabilities of ChatGPT4. You're also considering giving me a name. If there's anything else you'd like to add or update, feel free to let me know. So why is that even interesting in the first place? So if you're a business owner, you are gonna be putting a lot of content into ChatGPT because you wanna make sure that uh, it has your brand voice, your brand tone, all that fun stuff. But it's really annoying to have to do that every single time you wanna do something new, whether that's a new newsletter, whether that's a new newsletter, or that's a new piece of content you wanna do now, it will remember, it doesn't matter where in the chat that you did it. Here's what's really interesting too, right? When I was giving all the information about my business and what we're doing, the co-host of webinar part is actually a new offer. And what's interesting was it, she, whatever, the, the AI articulated what I do better than I do. Sometimes I'm like lost about what I actually do to bring value to customers because I've done so many different offers. I've helped so many other small business owners do several different things. And the fact that it actually condensed what I do in a really simple sentence, I actually took that as kind of a V1 and, and released it. Here's some of the use cases though that I actually wanted to show you. All right, so now it's time for a use case. So when I went into this one day training with Mike Koenigs, I had this one admin problem that was kind of like annoying me. I have this newsletter called The Elevated Entrepreneur and I've sent out probably, I don't even know how many emails at this point through that newsletter and for years have been doing it. And what I wanted to do was have someone pull all of those emails together and categorize them based on what I'm talking about. And there's a handful of categories that I usually talk about, whether it's like sales and marketing tips, my YouTube channel, there's sales pitches that I do, there's like one other one. But anyway, so I've been having someone work on this for literally weeks and I was like, you know what, let me see if ChatGPT can do this a little bit faster. So I literally just had to upload, you can see here, a document with the newsletter in there with all the newsletters I've done over the years and I asked it simply to categorize the content and then reorganize the document based on the categories that it found. And guess what? Literally within 20 seconds, I don't even know, probably less, it organized it based on me pitching, sales and marketing tips, mindset, and my YouTube videos. Put And then it for, reformatted the document 
and spit it back out to me. So now I can actually take each category and do whatever I need to with them. But again, I was just kind of amazed at the fact that number one, it understood the difference between a subject line and the actual content itself. There's so many little things that like I was so impressed by, but the fact that it made everything so much faster. And then this is where it gets even cooler, at least for me anyway. Now I started to think to myself, okay, it can it take that information that it learned for me in that newsletter, understand my brand voice and all that stuff, and then help me do other things, which then led me to copy for landing pages. Before I move on, actually, I wanna show you one other cool thing. So on the long-term order sequence, remember I had them take all of my newsletters and and put them in organ organize them based on the categories. Now the next thing was I wanted to do, I wanna do more t uh, text marketing. And so I go, well, let's not reinvent the wheel. I asked it to take my newsletters that I'd already done and then condense it into a really simple text. Because what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna send out the newsletter and then I'm gonna have a text that goes with it. Because text, obviously people open it more, they're more engaged with it. And so I asked it to for every single newsletter to create a text to go with it. And it did, literally every single one and every single category create a really simple text that can go with it with a link, which by the way, links to my blog. How did I know I had a blog? Is that not weird to anybody else? Anyway, so I thought that was really cool. Now, moving on to our use case number two for me. So once I realized that, oh, if I prompt it the right way, and if I train the AI the right way, it'll actually understand who I am and what I do. Okay, now. So I, like I mentioned earlier, I have this new offer that we're doing these called the co-hosted webinar. The idea is instead of just building the webinar for our clients, we're actually gonna go in and co-host it with them so that it's not as awkward and blah, blah, blah. However, we don't have a landing page for it yet. And so this has been one of those things that's been really bothering me. And the thing that I've realized as an entrepreneur that's really important is to get the V1 out as soon as humanly possible. Then you can reiterate. But V1, I feel like the version one of your marketing, copy, the landing page imagery, it just takes forever for me. And then I remembered, oh, this thing called ChatGPT. So what I did was I said, I asked it to go to my YouTube channel and analyze it for my brand voice. So I went and it reviewed my YouTube channel and it gave me kind of the tone and style, the audience engagement, visual representation. Okay, that's pretty cool. Next thing I did was I uploaded all those newsletters I mentioned before, and I asked it to learn from these newsletters that I wrote uh, and to understand my brand voice. Once again, it went through and understood and told me what exactly they understood about my brand voice. Next, I gave a breakdown of what my offer is gonna be. So I have a new offer called the Elevated Co-Hosted Webinar. The offer is for coaches and consultants looking to generate leads, convert clients through co-hosted webinars. Kind of gave a breakdown of all the things that we're gonna provide to those clients. Then I said, give me a sales landing page using my brand voice and it kicked one out. Now, here's the thing, is this perfect? Am I gonna copy and paste this onto my website? No, however though, afterwards I said, you know what, this is good, this helps me kind of get in my mind of what exactly I'm trying to do with this, you know, this sales letter, if you will, this landing page. So then I said, you know what, why don't you reformat the landing page using Donald Miller's story brand framework? Huge fan of Donald Miller, I think he's great and uh, the way that he does landing pages are amazing and what do you do or what do you know? It literally spit out the format in Donald Miller's framework. Pretty awesome. So again, am I gonna take this and literally copy paste it onto a website? No, but it's this gives me a really good place to start and like tweak. And it doesn't really just stop there because again, it knows my brand voice, it knows my offer. So I asked it, now create three emails that I can send to my list that could get them to book a consultation with me about this offer. And once again, it did. And I think more importantly, it got pretty darn close to my brand voice. And that's been my biggest gripe with AI and copywriting in general. It's really hard to get the brand voice and tone down. But now that I can remember things based off of like newsletters you put in there, YouTube videos, transcripts, all that stuff, it'll get a lot cooler. So this, by the way, I know for a lot of people, it's kind of basic. Like you all have been doing this for a little bit. I just learned about this literally yesterday, but it gets even deeper than that. There was another case study that I think is gonna revolutionize the way people use AI, especially entrepreneurs to duplicate themselves, to clone themselves. And this, this company called Delphi is doing it. So I'll show you that next. Okay, so Delphi AI, uh, where one of the representatives came to the, the talk. And what was the most interesting thing about this is imagine a world where one of the, I should put it this way, one of the biggest problems that CEOs have is when they start to grow and scale, they can't duplicate themselves. And so they try to hire people, but they can't get the voice right, they can't get the, the tone right, they can't, they can't get the messaging right, and so this will allow you to literally clone yourself. Okay, so there's already, as you could tell, there's people that uh, are already utilizing this, like Brendan Bouchard, for example, you know, JJ Virgin. I don't I actually don't know what some of those people are. But anyway, tons of different creators and thought leaders are using this, and, and here's why. You literally just, you upload 
transcripts of your videos. You're gonna send them podcast interviews. Send them everything that is about you. And what you could do then is a few different things. One, you can create a situation where the chat bot, like this is what Brandon Bouchard uses, is he has a chat box on his website that literally is Brennan. So if you ask it a question about anything in relation to the course that you're in or whatever you bought from Brennan, it's going to answer as if it's Brennan, okay? So now your clients will have 100% 24-7 access technically to you, which is pretty crazy. I don't know if anybody else is freaking out about this, but it's pretty cool. So the other part of this uh, too is, so Joe Polish, a good friend of mine and, and the owner of Genius Network, they did this case study with Joe. This is literally just B-roll. I don't need it. Oh, this is it. Well, no, but still, this is the whole thing. This, oh, this is what we're doing right here. <laughs> yes. so, yes. so you're going to superimpose like lip sync. Yeah, like, so I'm, uh, I'm going to say that how much people like, oh, love me and how amazing I am. I'm going to put that in the video. Totally makes sense. Yeah. And so what they did was they uploaded all of this content, whatever, and then you can actually do it to where it's a phone call. So we called in to this clone version of Joe Polish and asked it questions. Hey, what do you think about marketing? What do you think about AI? What do you think about health and fitness? All these things. And based on all the data that it was provided on Joe, it gave a Joe Polish answer. You can adjust the creativity. You can increase the amount of swearing because one of my pieces of feedback was, hey, it doesn't swear nearly as much as Joe, Joe does. But you can increase that too. You can tell it to say the F word more, whatever it is to make it more like you. And it's pretty freaking close. Again, is it perfect? No, not yet but it's probably gonna get there. Okay, so what does this company mean for people like me and you, entrepreneurs? Okay, for one, again, once you get to the point where you want to clone yourself, you need to figure out a way that people can actually get access to you, but not have to actually take up your time. This is gonna be a really good option. The other thing about this too is imagine support chat. Imagine you are a, a CEO of a billion dollar company and it's really important to have like your character be a part of every single part of it, right? The support line, the and then people call into your support chat or call into your support line and they get the CEO of the company, right? <laughs> and that sounds like the CEO of the company. Wouldn't that be cool? Like, is it a little bit narcissistic? Maybe a little bit, but like, <laughs> regardless though, has some really cool applications and obviously a lot more than I haven't even thought about yet. All right, so let's wrap this thing up and bring it on home. Now, here's the thing. I went into yesterday's training and with the announcement of ChatGPT 4.0, a little panicked. And honestly, I think a lot of us maybe should still be. I mean, the truth of the matter is AI right now can turn somebody who is a, a decent worker, a decent entrepreneur and make them an A player. I mean, that's the ability of AI. It does V1s a lot faster, makes people way more productive. Now, the people that aren't using it, here's the truth, they're gonna kind of fall away to the wayside. I mean, if you're not using AI at this point, if you're not making it be more productive, the competition is gonna go away. But what does this mean though for us as humans, right? Like AI also can do a lot of things with content. You can do use things like Hey hey Jen, I think it's called, and make an actual video of yourself talking. It doesn't have to be you. I think one of the things that came up over the weekend was yes, AI is going to do a lot of things for us. However, it's gonna make people that are much more authentic, people that are very authentic uh, to themselves, people that are more human, stand out more. One of the examples was, was, hey, yes, AI can create a song literally within seconds. But what's gonna be even more impressive to us eventually is gonna be the people that can actually sit down and play guitar. That's gonna be fascinating to us, to be able to have them there, not just play music that sounds good to us, but the fact that they put the time and energy into learning it is gonna be that much more interesting to us. And I think, again, with YouTube, there's gonna be a separation, right? There's gonna be AI generated content, which if that's your thing, and you wanna be entertained by it, cool. But I think even more so for content creators on YouTube, if you can bring in the behind the scenes, showcase you as a human being, you're gonna stand out in the crowd of other people that are over leveraging, I guess, AI. So here's the final thing I wanna say. There was one quote that kind of came out that I wrote down several times throughout it because I was kind of blown away by it. Apparently there's this bet going on between um, these other billionaires, the Sam Altman, I think is his name, the, the CEO of ChatGPT and, and all these folks. And Mike Ke Keenigs, again, the guy that you know put on this training, he said, I think in 18 months, we're gonna see our first billion dollar solopreneur. One person businesses are gonna be even more of a thing and it's gonna be even more realistic, not just make a million dollars as a solopreneur, but actually to be a billionaire, which is pretty freaking wild. So 
Listen, I, I went into this training um, kind of with this kind of naive, I guess, approach to this of going, you know, AI, you know, it, I know it's coming, I know it's useful, but I just don't want to invest the time into learning it, uh, understanding the prompts and what it could do for my business. I just didn't think it was a good use of my time to now I'm like, man, I need to figure this thing out. I need to figure out fast because there's tons of opportunity there. So that's it. I want to hear your thoughts though. Is, is there anything with a new release of ChatGPT 4.0 or any of the type of new AI things you guys are, are most excited about, but also most nervous about maybe? Let me know in the comments below how you're going to be using AI to make yourself more efficient, more productive, but also a better entrepreneur. And uh, as always, thanks for listening and I'll catch you on the next one.